Hey guys, Frankie Day here. Okay guys, this is a surprise video for this evening. I just got back from playing music and everything. And uh, as promised, um, this is a special video to our Mr. Freddy uh, Duarte. Uh, as I mentioned from the last video, uh, uh, Melman, Melman came up to the driveway and turned out a big old huge box. I said, oh, I don't remember ordering anything. Huh. And I saw my name up there and I said, man, that's for me. And uh, to my surprise, you know, it was from Freddie and uh, he sent me three gifts. So the topic of this video this evening is called More Gifts from Freddie. And a special shout out to him personally from me to him. For, he's a very wonderful person and uh, he has a heart of gold. And uh, if there's more people more like Freddie, we wouldn't have it, some we wouldn't have any problems at all. And uh, so, uh, Freddie, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for these gifts. You know they're they're wonderful, especially to touch my heart, and especially the the lady Sarah, which I'll be showing that uh, after the other two. Okay, guys, we're gonna get to the video right now. Uh, in, in the contents of the box, Freddy sent me uh, three gifts, actually virtually four. The first one was the Trumpeter 1 through 50 scale, my long lost love. I, I, I never think I'd ever get my hands on one because they're hard to find. As a matter of fact, I don't think they sell them anymore, so they're actually they're a collector's item, I think. But I, I could be wrong, but make a long story short, uh, the first gift that, the, that came out of the box was a 1 through 50 scale. Trumpeter USS Saratoga, the twin sister ship to the USS Lexington, which they were actually were intended to be battle cruisers. Pertaining to the uh, Washington Treaty Program, they were stricken from the Naval Register as battle, battle cruisers. They say, we got too many battleships, too many cruisers, too many destroyers, too many this, too many that. It's one thing we don't have, since the aircraft carriers are insane. We can use some aircraft carriers, in which we did. So these were actually were converted from a battle cruiser to an aircraft carrier of its own type, in its own style. And uh, the, the USS Saratoga is was used as a, as a test pond for bikini and atoll during the atomic bomb that they used back in 1945 after they dropped the bomb in Japan. And they actually, I think it's actually 47 or 46, somewhere around there they did that. <coughs> and um, she, she, uh, she sunk. And she lays at the bottom of 200 and something feet in a very shallow atoll. And uh, today uh, she's sitting even keel. And uh, she's uh, almost an underwater reef. Man-made reef. It's such a beautiful ship, even saying sunk in that beautiful turquoise blue water. It's, it's beautiful. And gift number two was the, the flagship of the Imperial Japanese Navy was the Japanese Navy aircraft carrier Akagi. That's a 1 400 or 1 450th scale I think. I don't know. I think it's uh, yeah, it's 1 450 scale. It's big. And uh, Freddie started on it. He did a beautiful job on the flight deck. I'm going to preserve that deck. I'm not going to touch anything on that deck and keep the deck right the way it is. And uh, so we'll get to it as we uh, as I show you the models. And uh, gift number three is the Acrid Miniatures 148 scale F3 F2, the flying beer barrel. Inside the flying beer barrel kit, my Acrid Miniatures. There's a monogram F4F Wildcat in there too. So, two kits, one box. And I'm uh, very delighted and thank you very much, Freddie, for this. Okay, guys, we'll start out with the, uh, with the flying beer barrel. You guys probably got this new stash. Think about buying one or even built one. Uh, this is what he sent me in the mail. Inside here is a 148 scale monogram 
F4F Wildcat. And, uh, and I was uh, very uh, amazed you get that much models in one box. So these are the instructions that that come with the um, that come with the Active Miniatures kit. This is uh, the, the series of the F3F2, uh, and um, that was actually the last of the shipboard naval fighters used, and it was also used aboard the deck of the USS Saratoga, which the kit has got these in sprues. So inside this kit. Is this monogram one? F4F Wildcat. And all the parts, the uh, decals, everything is here. I mean, it's uh, it's beautiful. And it's uh, it's um, about about the same size as a Timia cat. Freddie did a little work on it. He got some interior green painted inside there, and. Uh, so ain't much, ain't much detail, this little squirt fellas. I remember when this kit came out, my monogram came out in 1960. And uh, it retailed 98 cents. It was actually one of the third of the uh, quarter inch scale naval shipboard fighters that monogram produced that day. Uh, also, I got the, um, the F3F2 top wing. And uh, the other sprues laying top here. And it's got probably more. Down here in the bottom of the box is all the fittings. So this kit's pretty well complete in its entirety. Freddy takes care of his stuff, you know. He he's like me. He takes uh, parts out and looks at them and tinkers them a little bit and puts them away in the box and and uh, puts the lid on it. And that lid says all the parts, the contents ain't going nowhere. And uh, so thank you, Freddie, for this beautiful kit here. I got two of them here. Okay, fellas, here's the other one here. This is the uh, this kit that will make them more. This kit's ancient. This actually is a very, very early 1970s kit. To be precise, 1971. Uh, Japan was really uh, into releasing ejection models at the time, at that era, and they actually were very inexpensive. They weren't that much. And they introduced to the USA new tooling uh, methods that's been done in their kits, opposed to our kits. And these are treasures in their own, in their own uh, worth. So this is the Akagi. This is what uh, out of, out of Yamato's number one flagship they used. And uh, the Akagi was uh, sunk during the during the Battle of Midway, a boat to Japan, and uh, she was the strike force uh, flagship for um, Climb Mountain Taka, Pearl Harbor, and uh, I believe Pachita was the, uh, the the commanding officer of that uh, of the Pearl Harbor raid, and he actually he had the. Uh, the uh, the command of all the of the, the whole entire uh, carrier wing, and um, this was his ship. These Japanese sure had some strange looking ships and their designs, but they're very beautiful ships in their own, in their own perspective ways. And right here, he's uh, he started on this. He tinkered with it a little bit, and, and he did a very very excellent job on his deck, guys. I looked at it. He, he did, a, he did a damn good job on it. So here's a deck right here. I don't need nothing, fellas. All I this thing needs now is to be put right on top of the superstructure she's done and get those valves, 97s and cakes. The zero's all painted up. And uh, she was a pretty good sized carrier for her day, guys. And um, I believe these kits, and then they were actually a gimmick model. Because you can see at one time it carried batteries in there and had motors. Back in the 1970s, guys, these things were gimmick models. They had motors, they all came with motors. 
And they superseded the stuff that what Lindbergh had. And so now I guess they more or less know that a lot of guys are guys like us are not in the toys that play out in the water with with uh, back and forth using a battery. So we're in a better uh, technology than this. So they don't they, they don't no longer make uh, motors including inside the kit. Uh, Fred got started us a little bit. He um, took some parts out and dry fitted here and there. And uh, the only the only uh, primary uh, part that he painted on this here kit is the flight deck. And um, he did a very, very fabulous job on it. Very beautiful job. I like how to put the wash on there. It gives, the, it, gives it the illusion of, uh, of exhaust, stain, wear, and tear. And that was a very beautiful, uh, it was a very beautiful kit. And I'm going to have fun building this. So we got winter coming up. I'm going to be a very busy, busy, busy man. Okay, guys. We'll save the best for last. This is the one I've been hunting for for a long, long, long time. I never thought I would get my hands on one of these bad boys. This is the 1350 scale USS Lexington. The Lady Lex. I don't mean the USS Saratoga. The sister ship to, to the uh, Lexington. These were actually at one time were battle cruisers. But during the Washington Treaty Program, they never made their entirety as a battle cruiser. They're converted into big aircraft carriers. These things are 800 feet long, huge. And uh, the carrier wing of this consists of uh, of SBU uh, uh, PS uh, uh, Scout Bombers, eight BFC Ghost Hawks, and eight. Torpedo Chucks, Martin T4Ms, and lastly, they got eight F3F biplanes. The last of the shipboard fighters, the Jackville landing gear, the flying beer barrel. This is a beautiful kit, guys. It, it's uh, it's going to make a very wonderful, wonderful addition to my fleet I have. And it's going to keep me busy for many hours. And uh, so, this is a good kit. And Freddie, thank you very much, buddy. God bless you. Thank you, sir. He's a wonderful man, he is. And uh, like I said earlier in the video, fellas, if we had a lot more guys in the world like Freddie, we wouldn't have very much problems. Everybody get along quite well and very happy. And uh, Freddie, if there's anything you need, uh, just let me know. I probably go through my stash and and yank it out and, and send it your way. And thank you again, sir. Okay, fellas, that about does it for this evening for me. This was kind of like a special video for uh, and uh, more gifts from Freddie. And um, so I got I got a lot of work here. I'm working. Got my Waco back here behind me. I work on that. So I got to do some more. Uh, paint work on it and stuff and do some sanding down a little more and straighten out some stuff. I haven't worked on this thing in over 10 years. And uh, so like I said, I've got the, <laughs> the U-Control bug. I couldn't believe it. I threw that PT-17 Stearman. My brother, you know, I, I said, hey Mike, would you come over there and uh, hold on this uh, plane for me while I take off on it? He says, you ain't going to fly that thing, are you? I said, well, heck yeah. Started up. Walked out there and he held it, let it go, and whoo! And he he had a, a phone, like most phones now, he's got cameras in them. So I, I had no idea that his that his uh, camera, you know, doesn't do nothing on the computer, nothing like that. It's, it's all built inside the phone, and it stays there. He don't go out. And uh, so I was kind of down and hard a little bit. He made a, a good video of that, and they showed me out there. You can see just going around in circles and and I was just like a new kid, new toy, just having some fun. So it kinda of opened some doors just to break up the monotony a little bit, so I drug this bad boy out of the out of the closet and uh gonna get it all done. I got most of the trim all finished on it. So I got some uh 
I got some polishing up to do on it before it's all done. Got a lot more work on it, so I should have it done by this Sunday. And I'll make a special video of that. Tomorrow I'm going to go out in the hobby shop and pick up a motor for it. And uh, I got my Great Lakes train over there right next to it. I got the motor installed, all the radio gear and that thing. I think it's ready to go. So I'm going to fly that thing you control, guys. And use my transmitter as a speed control. And it's kind of it's kind of weird, but uh, some guys do that. A lot of, most guys, uh, a lot of, of course, the AMA rules are you control. You got to run your your trans your uh, your receiver lines all through the the lines of your handle. And uh, years ago, we didn't have that. We had those old Roberts J J type bell cranks. You had three lines. You had your stabilized two of your stabilizer lines, and the third line was your throttle. And that bell crank worked off your engine. And then in your bell crank, you had a spring that kept that thing in positive position. That way, you pull the bell crank up, and it'll rev the motor up. You let go, it'll spring right back in the neutral again. So you can control the throttle by just kind of pulling on the line. And uh, that's how it was back in those days. Nowadays, they use use radio control which is good it's getting it's very permissible one thing about electric flight fellas it sure supersedes the hell out of glow engines you know but there's something about glow engines you know the, the miniaturization of, of these gasoline motors and uh, so that PT-17 I had I flew it's got a uh, has a an OS 20 engine in it and it uh, pulls up pretty well scale has a lot of pull to it and um this one behind me is going to have a lot of pull. When it gets done, it's probably weigh about four pounds when it's finished. And this motor I'm getting for it, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a .32 motor. It's a brushless and it runs, uh, it can pull anything from four to six pounds. So, it's a pretty powerful engine. It's good to have more power than not enough, guys. Okay, that's enough of this. So, it's time for me to close. I'm about ready to relax a little bit and I go to bed and uh, I'd like to thank you guys very much for tuning in and uh, may God bless make my life happy and uh, happy modeling and please subscribe and uh, next video I don't know what's going next video is going to be so far this week and this week it'll be done and uh, number two uh, I may have a video of that uh, the ICM 148 scale Expediter C45 Beechcraft Super 18. And uh, so, anyway, guys, I'll shoot a couple of videos this week before it's over with. So stay tuned for those. And uh, <laughs> thanks, fellas, for tuning in. God bless you guys. And uh, Freddie, thank you very much again, dear friend. You the man, buddy. You the man. Thanks, buddy. See you, fellas. <laughs>